Hey guys, so today we're going to be working on my Porsche 912 again. We are doing rust repair on some holes I found that I apparently didn't repair right back in the 90s when I put this car kind of back on the road. Now, I was afraid this video would be boring to everybody looking at cutting and welding. So, I've already filmed a bunch of it. There was a small hole there and I made that patch, filled that in. This was some previous stuff I kind of just cleaned up. And I got to looking a little more at the bottom. This was pretty much, there was a hole there. So I made a piece to fill in all of that. I got that welded in. There's kind of a contour. I will go back and touch this up with a little fiberglass filler. There's a little bit of a dent right there I need to fill in. But anyway, I won't be boring you with that footage because I deleted all of it somehow. So, I'll bore you with some more stuff. Working around the car, everything back to here looks pretty good. I fixed this stuff then, and that's probably good enough. It just needs the weld be cleaned up and just prettied up a little bit. But there's this little beauty. And it must have been an afterthought because I put blue silicone in it to seal the rest of that up and it never got really welded. I'm not even sure what's going on there. So it's almost like we just started welding and never finished it. So I'm gonna cut all that out of there and we'll start over on that one. Looks as though we welded it here and just never finished it. So I'm gonna try grinding a little bit of this seam off and see if it'll come off with sanding disc on a cheap Harbor Freight angle grinder. So there's what we're dealing with. That's going to be a little bit of a mess. So, let's get some of that crap off there and figure out where we have good metal. Looks like it's actually a little bit jacked up right there. I can see some holes. Hmm, let's try a different tool. Since I've already filmed about two hours of this, all my tools are already laying all over the place here. So, that's awful thin there. So I'm just gonna start whittling away. Here, I'm gonna use the air, little body saw. Let's get some of this out of the way. When it cuts that easy, you know it's thin. Anyway, you get the picture. Let me get the camera out of the way and I will hack this out to something manageable. So it's been a couple days. Finally getting back to this. I cut out a manageable section here and I need to go in and vacuum all that mess out before I seal it up. But this piece isn't as straightforward as we'll go look at the other side because there's an indentation. It's not just one solid piece. Let's go look at that. Over here where this jack receiver tube is, this is in pretty good shape. There's kind of an indentation, I guess, for strengthening whatever. And then it curves around. So we will have to, uh, don't have to, but I'd like to try to copy that shape on the piece I make for the other side. I think there's a little crinkled and dented. Not sure what happened there. Errant floor jack maybe. So it looks like it'll come back. There's this little indentation then come around. So I'll try to copy that when we make our patch piece. So I think I'll start by just making the general shape, getting that kind of tuned in. Then I'll figure out how to do that indentation. That might be two pieces, I don't know yet. First, have some good old scrap paper. My hands are dirty enough. I can make a little stain. I don't need to use the pencil. So that'll be the start for our first pattern. 
All right, that's pretty close. Now, transfer this to your favorite beverage container. Or you, I guess you could go buy some kind of poster board, but what's the fun in that? So, I just trace around it. Cut her out. So I've decided because of the complexity, I'm going to do this in several pieces. I've got a piece here I've previously bent some stuff, Alan, so I'm going to try to get this bent into shape and we'll just work our way around, maybe even assemble it off the car and then put it in and weld it in one shot. Starts curving right about an inch in. So if you can find something to bang around, you can do that pretty easily. Let me go check this and see what it looks like. This was my precision measuring instrument. That's about how long before it curves back this way. So mark that. And that's a little steeper curve. I can probably just hold that like so. Kind of start the crease right there. And then back and forth and keep checking it. It actually fits pretty close, but this is going to be kind of a compound curve piece because it comes around the side of the car and then goes forward and this is pretty much where that corner is starting so I need to kind of curve it around this way if that makes sense so in order to do that I got this bag full of shot that I got I've never used one of these before so we'll see how this goes and I have this hammer that you can used to start forming those shapes. So it's starting to move it. So I've got the shape pretty well. I need to add a little bit right here and I think I will add a piece that's 90 degrees because I need to grind all this off because right here this should be where the two pieces come together, the floor pan and this whole side piece, which becomes the rocker panel. But that's all bits and pieces and weld. So I will form that piece onto here so there'll be an L. And then it'll it'll be all one piece and look right. So anyway, and then we're actually back inside the floor here. I'll come in and I'll cut that may even tack it first and then cut that and that way it'll end up being a butt weld right together but since I got this, the shape where it is I don't want to try to move that so I will uh, work on adding a little piece to this so this is a piece we've been working on it'll sit under the car like so and then this lip will turn down and that's what will weld for the pinch seam. Now is since this piece is starting to turn the corner and the body of the car I need to curve this piece of the lip and I can do that by cutting out pie shaped pieces and bending it and welding it but it's not gonna it's gonna look like I did that so I went and found my shrinker stretcher so this has teeth in here that will grab this metal and make it either stretch it and pull it apart or squeeze it together. So let's try it. So 
So in just a few little squeezes there, and that's what it's starting to do. I'll go back and forth to the car and check that and see if my curve's right. And then we'll trim it to size. It needs a little bit more, so I'm gonna hit a little bit more right there. This has another set of dies, the stretcher, which will do the opposite. It'll push it apart. You can buy a stand this thing goes on, which I'm too cheap to do, or you can buy one that actually is foot operated. I did this a lot. I might do something different, but for right now, I can just stick it in the vise when I need it. Probably haven't used this thing in five years. So that's kind of what I'm after. Not too bad. And as I start get this piece ready we'll get it in I'll cut through that and then that'll butt up and then we can fill in and kind of bend and tap as needed put it together so now I will cut this and get this part ready I found my little panel clamps these are designed to hold two panels together when you weld to um, to give you the perfect gap Let's see if I can do this I need to ditch the gloves. So, make sure my angle's right upside down. This little piece of metal with the square hole goes up through. And this little piece of my this may be too wide, this may not work. Goes in there. No, just a little bit long. So I'll do one better. I forgot I had these. These are another version of a panel clamp. Like a little foot. So the piece goes in the car like that. Don't want to get my orientation and make this thing backwards or upside down. So this little panel, this little foot panel clamp. Clamp it like so. Now I can clamp this side. There. Now I'll weld right down that gap, and when I grind it, you'll never know that it was two separate pieces. And the idea of a little bit of gap is the metal, you'll actually get, uh, you'll get welding wire down in the groove other than just on top, so it's fused all the way through. So there's our piece, ground down. Um, so I guess we are ready to weld this thing in place. I want to put a little bit of a gap so I have something to fill like I did on the other piece. I guess this piece. Go ahead and clamp it in clamp it back here. It's overlapped back here. Once I get it tacked and started, I'll come and I'll cut this piece so it'll be flush. See that, but eating away the old metal trying to get this stuck together. 
It'll be a while. But we'll get it. And here in a minute, I'll cut that and get that tack together. All right, so I had to turn the voltage way down, but it's starting to attach. So I'll work our, work our way around here. So if you can keep your heat concentrated over on the good metal and get it molten and then dip into the, the bad metal, you have a better chance of making it fuse. Otherwise, you're gonna blow a big hole in it. And I like to make my tacks, or I guess my welds, maybe a quarter inch long because if you just hit it and tack it you never seem to get it hot enough to fuse together so if you can start it and then move just a you know, quarter inch and stop you can get a lot better weld okay so that's Weld it in. I shot some self-etching primer up inside of all this. Keep everything from rusting. And I vacuumed all the rust out. So I guess the next piece we'll, we'll shoot for this section. Based on the other side where this body pan just kind of tapers in. It goes flat and then comes back out. It's about an inch past this edge. So I think we'll make a little pie shaped piece to go here and then we'll make this piece that goes in and back out. And actually, I may work on making this dimple piece first. It might be a little easier. So I'm gonna work on some of that. So I have pretty much finished this patch. We have the indentation kind of like the other side, like it's supposed to be in the start of the curve. I rearranged the car on the lift. Everything seems pretty good until about right here and then we have holes and it's, it's not good all the way back to this area. <clears throat> this is a patch done previously. This is a patch done previously. We kind of made it into a point which is not the profile it should be. It should be rounded like near as I can tell, like it is on the rocket panels. It should have to continue that sort of profile. I ground some of this out when I did the rear suspension work, but I'm gonna grind some more to try to make it look somewhat correct. And then we'll get it close and come back in with some fiberglass filler and smooth it out to give it the correct shape where there's little dents and things that won't really affect the structure. I mean, if a purist comes and looks at it and starts poking around, the subterfuge won't last, but it'll be good enough from a distance. So there's all kinds of ugly weld bead along here. I think I will grind that off first to clean that straight line up, and then we will cut what we need to out of here and reattach that to the back and then come out here and I guess I'm gonna slice this out somehow and figure out a way to roll it over so I can get that curve in there. I don't really wanna pack that much fiberglass filler in there. So I wanna to try to make it as much as I can out of metal. So initially, I think I'll actually go in here with aggressive grinding stone and try to get that out of there. I don't, sh I don't think I'll show you that part because it'll be a bunch of sparks and I don't wanna screw my lens up. I'm surprised I haven't already. So I'll bring it back in just a second. So I ground some of that weld off and that is what we have. I was hoping this would be good metal behind here but the whole thing is not, it's just a mess. So I think I'm gonna cut all of this off. This is supposed to be a 90 degree bend on this panel and a 90 on this panel pinched together and that's how it's welded in here it's just a big globby mess and the part that is supposed to be attached where am I right here is rotted off and attached here 
sort of, not very well. So I'm going to cut all this off and we'll kind of start over. I've hacked all that out, tried to make a straight line back to where it ends, and then to this side, take a piece of paper and make a dirt template out of it. Kind of put it in there and rub the edges. patch converted into steel and I clamped a piece of angle iron I had in the vise and clamped some wood to it and we're going to try to bend this 90 degree. Ideally you'd have a break and do this and I have one at work but it doesn't do me any good right now and it's not worth driving 20 minutes to go bend that so here goes. turned out pretty well. So that will go in the car like that. And we have to work on the, the radius of the bend. So let me go start on that. This is the back and it, it still needs to start kind of curving back flat right here about that where the rust ends it needs to kind of flatten back out so I'm gonna use this piece I built I have some scraps at work you know little corner dolly see how this turns out so I wanted to kind of roll this back over right there. Now back to the car to test. So that's kind of where we are. You may notice it looks kind of black up in there. I took some of this uh, duplicolor color rust fix which converts rust to I guess something you can eat or something I don't know. But I really can't like get that all out of there, so I shot this up as far in there as I could. Try to convert that to make it stop rusting. I think what I'm going to do is I also got some weld through primer. I'm supposed to let that dry 24 hours, but I don't have that much patience. So I'm going to use some of this weld through primer, shoot up in there, let that dry a little bit, and then prime the back side of our piece so it's at least protected when it's trapped in there for the rest of eternity. So let me get that done before we start welding. We are primed in and out and we are ready to tack this in and start fitting it. Part of the problems what I'm welding it to is like paper thin so it's blowing holes in it. So a couple of extra little tacks into the thicker part. If you time it just right, you can normally get it to weld. So we'll do some of that and then we'll hold it up. If I need to bend this lip down some more and then cut through both layers to get them butted up perfect. So that's what we're going to do next. Hold your ears, folks. Kind of using a new piece as a guide, but what's going to happen is I'm going to get screwed up with the cutting wheel and I won't have room because of the lift. So we'll try switching to the air body saw. So now that I have a gap there, probably bigger than I wanted, I'll get some tacks and start welding that. You know, I'll kind of do the same thing all the way down until we get this back piece pretty much welded in there. Again, if I cut out all the thin metal, there wouldn't be a car left. So you have to kind of really finesse your technique to try to keep the heat on the thick part and then just barely touch the thin to get it to weld without blowing huge holes in it. 
Anyway, that's what they made grinders for. So I welded this new piece in for the most part. Turned out pretty good as well as you can get to it. I need to grind that off, but I was going to do all the grinding at one time. I provided the lip on that portion. I need to do the lip on this. And originally I thought I could just slice this out and slide a piece in, but then it's going to, the welding is going to get into like a fillet weld. And it's going to look like a fillet weld. It's not going to look like it's a part of the body. Plus, this whole curve is not here. So, I think what I will do is this and this are new metal. And there is where it was welded together when we did this back in the 90s. So, to get the curve and to add the lip to this, I'm thinking I'll cut it across and up and, and cut this piece out and I will add the lip to it will form this bend around and actually cut it up here and weld it back in up here where I can weld horizontally and we'll get the curve in that way and we'll be able to kind of massage this to get look to get back to looking like it should um, and then I can form that piece, butt it up, and spot weld it like it should be. But I think I'm going to switch to a different camera because this one's getting pretty beat up from spattered dust, everything else. So I'm going to work on cutting this out of here, and I'll bring it back when I have have it like a, like I want it. So it's the next day. This is the uh, heat tube. It takes the heat from the engine and blows it in the passenger compartment. That's partially gone. I don't really see any way to fix that thing without disassembling the car. And can you see it? So we're just going to have to live with marginal heat, which is what these cars were notorious for anyway. So we're going to lose a little bit of heating efficiency on this side. I'm not too concerned about it, so I sprayed some rust converter in there to stop the mayhem. But got the patch piece ready to go in. I will work on bending the curve into this thing. I'm going to do some of it at the bench, but then the rest of it we'll have to weld and work it around and then cut it and weld it. But it's almost easier to form it in place. I have some gaps I'm going to have to work on filling. So let's go to the bench and try to bend this thing. So this is how it goes in the car with this edge here turned up. So we will just kind of guesstimate where that curve needs to be. I think it's about right there. We go test it. That is pretty good. I'm going to follow that the whole way. Okay, so we need to put the holes in here, and I remembered I have this tool, which is a punch and a flange tool where you can make flanges to weld things together. Seems to me the last time I used it, though, I wouldn't punch. Let's do a sample. I mean, it moves, but it doesn't punch the hole. It barely even scratches it. So as I recall... It must have hydro must have hydraulic fluid in there and uses air pressure over hydraulic and multiplies it. And it seems like I had to add oil in it the last time I used it and it worked. But I don't I'm not positive. Don't really remember how I added the oil, but this appears to be the only obvious place. See if that made any difference. I tried to. Well, now that it's stuck, let's add some more. There we go. So let's just uh, slide it on and punch the hole. 
This is how the flange portion operates. It punches that. It punches it. Flattens it so you can lap another panel over it and they would be flush. Let's get this on the car. So we're clamped in. Let's get some weld on here. Kind of nice welding the new metal. So that was the belt coming off the air compressor, so I guess we'll go deal with that here in a minute. We still have some air. <laughs> 